Good afternoon, sir. Uh, you certainly hit a very sensitive subject right now. I'm in Laredo, Texas, lifelong resident. And it's weird how it's, it's disappointing to see how our federal government treats residents along the border as something less than. They have a certain mm-hmm. disdain for us. They have a certain mm-hmm. uh, arrogance about the way they treat us as if we don't deserve the same level of protection as every taxpaying citizen in this country. We're being ignored. And we feel like we are absolutely being, I don't know, for lack of a better word, there's, there's a prejudice against us. I'm a seventh generation Hispanic. Most of the people that live along the border have been here for generations, even before we were part of the United States. And somehow we don't deserve the same level of protection. We go around our ranches and our properties armed to protect ourselves against people who we don't know what kind of criminal history they have, what kind of health history they have, whether they've been crossing jungles or through uh, 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 dirty uh, infested areas, uh, urban areas with disease and whatnot. We have no idea what mm-hmm. condition they're in. And we're packed into commercial air, fly, air, air uh, commercial airliners. If I travel from Laredo to Houston, one-third of that flight will have illegal aliens on board with their paperwork being mm-hmm. hauled at our cost alongside us as if they were equal to us in terms of their rights or that they had uh, high dollar paying tickets versus shipping them on buses to wherever they are going in the country when they should in fact be exported and and shipped back to their their country of origin until they prove their asylum cases. We are being ignored by our federal Mm -hmm. government and the Biden Mm -hmm. administration has absolutely ruined our communities. We're going through cost and expenses that we shouldn't be bearing as as mm-hmm. as a local community, as a citizen, as a as a municipality, and these folks have complete disregard for our rights to the same level of safety as the people who live in Washington D.C. or any other part of the country. It, it, mm-hmm. It's absolutely aggravating and, and disturbing. I can only imagine, Renee, what you must feel like when you hear people in. New York or Boston say, oh, we're overwhelmed. There's there's dozens and hundreds of them uh, coming in, in through the buses and and you look at what's happening in your community. I mean that that's gotta be that's gotta be like salt in the wound. And, and this is because Laredo as a city has had less of a problem than obviously Eagle Pass or El Paso and Brownsville. And the reason that we have less of a problem is because the cartels dominate and control who crosses where. Mm. The cartels in this part of Tamaulipas, according to officials who, who do this for a living, have explained to us that these cartels charge a lot more and are also more mm. violent and prone to cause abuse uh, or uh, um, injury to the people that mm. are trying to cross through the Laredo area. And they don't want their drug business disturbed by uh, distracting them with illegal agents and drawing too much attention to, to what's going on with drug and fentanyl trafficking across our part of the, of the, of the state. So uh, Eagle Pass gets it worse because that is their specialty. That is the cartel specialized. It's, it's specializing in people crossing versus other uh, parts of Texas borders that are more into drugs and, and fentanyl and things of that nature. So we, we, we've been lucky that we don't have the volume that Eagle Pass has, but those that do cross are prone to uh, violence because they are mm-hmm. packing weapons, packing drugs. We run across them on our properties. We are very fortunate that we have immediate response by uh, not just the DPS and Border Patrol, but officials that uh, Abbott has sent down here. So we've, we've got strong responses from na- National Guardsmen that are posted all along our border with and without electronic equipment. So we, we've been very blessed by uh, the protection levels that have been afforded to us by the state, but certainly not by the Biden administration, who continues to perpetuate mm. and, and, and cause this, this disaster that they, it's a self-inflicted wound. They mm. want more money, more funds, more resources to improve the conveyor belt, mm-hmm. not to stop and protect our border, but to improve mm-hmm. the conveyor belt into our country yeah. and expedite their crossings and, and distribution across the entire country. But for the most part, we don't matter to Washington, D.C. We, the citizens of South Texas and the border areas along the, along the Rio Grande, do not matter. 
our safety and our concerns and our mm-hmm. our monies are not as good as other people's money apparently mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's disgusting it does look that way what do you want to have happen renee we we want our borders enforced we want our we want the 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 border patrol to be focused on catching and exporting not catching and releasing we want the policies to change to con- to discontinue the practice of drawing people of uh, get rid of all the enticing elements that the Biden administration has put into place trump had it right and i'm i'm not the biggest trump fan but his policies worked we didn't have the disaster the, hum- the humanitarian disaster that we have now. Yeah. And we felt valid. We felt important. We felt equal to any and other, any other U.S. citizen across our country. Right now, we are not yeah. in that situation. I, you've said it powerfully. I, 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 I appreciate your saying it and the, the passion you say it with. Um, I hope that we, the rest of us in this country, can start living up to your expectations of us because i think we have let you down our 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 government leaders our our federal leaders have let us down and our our congress is doing what they can and uh, and you i mean you've heard people like henry quay are jumping on the bandwagon saying that Mm -hmm. abbott's practices have caused these deaths as of uh, recent deaths and eagle pass all proven to be false right folks are very anxious to, 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 to take those political jabs, but they're not anxious to help us. If they were really right. truly interested in helping us, they would do something about putting into place the policies we need or and the executive orders that we need. I don't care whether Congress acts on this or not by way of legislation. Border Patrol knows the rules. Border Patrol Association speaks very clearly when they are in the media. They, they mm-hmm. tell it like it is. Yep. Mallorca's is flat out lying. Yes, he's putting them in deferred adjudication or whatever the hell technical term he wants to come up with. But the reality is these folks from all over the world do not have the right to claim asylum and stay in our country. They can do that from their, their, their country of origin. They can do that from other uh, bordering nations, but certainly not within, within, our, yeah. within our properties, within our ranches, and within our cities. They need to execute the law the way it was written, and it starts from the top with Biden's policies. Yeah, yeah. So, Renee, you're thank you for you're good. the word out there. No, I it, listen. It's my honor that you would be listening today, and that you would call in. I appreciate that. I hope you'll I hope you'll keep in touch with me, and we are just very grateful for you saying what you just said. Well, sir, your your signal reaches as far down as Laredo and Zapata. But many people listen to you all. Sometimes we can't get a line in, but you're certainly doing your part uh, as as the the fourth element of government or the fourth branch of government to to get your journalistic true journalism in place to act to to to, to air out things that are truly on our mind that matter to our country. Yeah. Keep up the good work. And if anyone has any doubt about what I just described, get on a commercial plane from Laredo to Houston yeah. or Dallas. Yeah. Drive drive Highway 83 along the Rio Rio Grande mm-hmm. from you know Eagle Pass to to Brownsville and look at how many of those tent facilities with barbed wire and razor wire are set up to try to uh, uh, transport these people all over the all mm-hmm. over the country by the millions. Yeah, by it the is millions. a conveyor belt, like you said. Buses Thank you, Renee. And airplanes, white buses and white airplanes. Just keep an eye. Right. There's tons of them out here. That activity happens every day. So, again, keep up the good work, and thank you for what you do. 